So we're going to start with a quick overview on the Mixamo stuff, how to download animations and bake inside Motion Blur and then use it on any other character. Uh, so the first step is log in and download the T-Pose. I'm going to download the, this robot thingy. Always, I mean, you can use the same character all the time and just merge in the animation. You don't need to download the typos every time. Uh, I'll choose a couple of uh, animations. You don't need the skin because you got the skin from the typos. And this one, so two for now. All right, downloads, you, why, you, yeah, why bot, weird name. So open that up. Again, he's on skeleton. So I'm going to name this as, well, whatever, T-Pose. I don't know why there's two. Oh, I think Motion Builder creates it. Dot take. So you don't need the second one, you can delete it. So I'm going to save this guy for the next time. Remember that folder structure that I did? Uh, characters. So I'm going to put it in here. So next time I want to download more animations, he's there. I don't need to download him again. Right? So now I'm ready to merge in the animations. So Samba, I'm going to copy paste the name, merge with options, merge all, and just copy paste the name I just uh, copied in here. So now it's going to merge as Samba dancing, merge. So now we have the Samba, same process with the Capoeira. Capoeira. And I forgot to copy the name. Let's see if, if I can get it right. Probably not. Well, doesn't matter. And this is the second one. So now I have Capoeira, Samba, and the Tipos. So as you can see here, there's no character. So we need to characterize the, the skeleton. So anybody remember where? Characters, yay. So drag and drop on top of the joints, not the mesh. Characterize, biped. So now we have our mocap, uh, well, just a character, a new character. And this character is being, by default, is being driven by the, the joint, the skeleton, the nun, weird name, sorry. So now we can bake on the con create the control leg and bake the motion on the control leg at the same time, okay? Because if you just go like this switch, uh, it just switches. To, it just creates the control leg without the animation. It doesn't matter. Even if you do it by mistake, it's okay. You take the samba and there's nothing there. So don't panic because everything is still there. So if you switch to none. The animation is back, okay? So instead of just switching, we need to bake. So we go to the character button, file, no, sorry, bake, control rig, three dots. Because we have three takes, typos and the two others, we plot all takes, all three takes in here. Uh, if you have constant key reducer on, just uncheck it because it won't uh, mess with your, with your uh, keys and plot. So now we have the typos on the control rig, the samba, and the capoeira. I think this is where, this, this, the next step is where everybody, most of you got confused because I tried to do something here and then I switched to this and this is not working for everybody. So this is the proper step to do it. So now you save your scene I'm going to save my scene in 
whatever. You don't have to do this step, but uh, I like to be organized in mocap. Kind of call it dancing. So now the next step, I want to save these two takes separately. I can do that. I can do the, uh, do that step in one shot. So if I go file, save as. I'm going to save it in anims because remember the anims folder contains one animation per one take. That's that's the the recipe that story mode likes. If you save a file with more than one take, story mode doesn't like it. It it won't recognize the file or it probably pick the first take always. So you need to save the FBX one mocap with one take. One animation with one take. The way to do this is you save as again, and in here you have these two little options save one take per file. So it will save each take in your scene as a separate FBX. Okay? And if you choose the second option below, use take name, it will just use the take name, Capoeira and Samba Dancing. So I'm going to save this in NMs. Um, you don't need the typos anymore, so you just want to save these two, okay? So now if I look in the folder, NMs, modified, the last two, I have these two FBX files, separate. Cool? Everybody with me so far? Okay, good. So now I can open up any character open Erger with no animation switch on to control rig because there's no animation so you could just switch it on right go in story mode character animation track Ergor and now I can bring these in. I can bring it in from Windows Explorer even. So you can drag and drop from here. See? That's all. So always remember mix ammo. You have to characterize, merge it in. Everybody knows how to do merge. And then bake to control rig and then save each anim as a separate FBX. Questions? Yeah, it's the scouting tool, different size. Like, you download from the demo, the scouting is bigger and your character is smaller. It, it shouldn't matter because the control rig does not detect scale. When you bring it in in story mode, it, it will not affect the scale of your character. So it should, let's say your character is half of Aragor, the, the mocap coming in from, or the opposite. Let's say the character you're bringing in mocap is half the size of the uh, Mixamo NMs. Mm -hmm. It will adjust. So uh, actually, I'm going to try something. I'm going to bring in Gremlin. Because he's shorter. You see, he's not two meters. He's one meter. So if I bring him in, bring in that... Uh, the mocap that I just saved, see? It adjusts, it scales down depending on his height. So you don't have to worry about scale. Other questions? Okay, good. So um, I'm gonna continue. So, okay, so mocap from the mocap room. The stuff we shot uh, with Tyra and uh, Julian, Julian, uh, damn it, Julian, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, we did two J's, I was close, <laughs> sorry Jeremy, so um, I put those on the S drive, let me check if I put it in the Where did I put it? Doesn't matter. I think 
let me go and fetch it in here. Oh, okay. Should have put it up here. It's okay. So in here, well, let's let's make a shortcut because we're probably gonna use it later. So I'm gonna add the favorite folder here, add a favorite path. Now if I open up the track, this is the, the date we captured on January. Okay? So what you're gonna see here is two folders. You're always gonna see two folders. C3D is the markers. We're gonna go through that next week because it's big. I'll show you what it looks like, the data looks like. So these are the markers. This is Tyra. Yeah, and this is Jeremy. So as you can see, these are the markers that get exported from the suits. Yeah, this was the funny one, the last one. The other folder is FBX files. So if I bring that in, it's just a bunch of joints, like the Mexamo stuff without a character, okay? So if I play that, yeah, it's pretty clean, right? So I don't, I don't need to do this, the markers and the, all the, you'll see next week. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, elaborate, but once you do one setup, you can easily bring in more mocap. But this one is super clean. So what I'm gonna do is just use the, characterize this joint like we did with the Maxamo stuff and just transfer it to the character, as easy as that. And then you cut up what you need, obviously. You don't need the, you still need the T-pose. That's why we always say T-pose and then do the action and then end up in a T-pose again. You, you still need that kind of a reset on the, on the character. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose one and show you Jeremy's got a nice uh, right hook punch there. Probably gonna use that one. <laughs> Sorry, Tyra. <laughs> I'll use yours next next class. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna take uh, Jeremy's data and yeah, so let's do that. So uh, I would like to color him differently because this way we can see the mocap skeleton different color than the character skeleton. So um, this shortcut is you if you hold down spacebar and you right mouse click the hip joint, you will select all the joints, uh, the skeleton for Jeremy. You can do that with any, any, any hierarchy. If you hold down space and right mouse click, you select all the joints. So in here, skeleton root, no, uh, this one. Skeleton node setting in the properties, you can change the color. So I'm gonna change it to red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a character now. I want to pick a character that's the right scale. Let me see. Is he two meters? Uh, characters. I think a yeah, humanoid is good. This one. Okay. Um, so, like I said before, right now, this is just a joint, so I'm gonna characterize it like I did with the Maxamo stuff, okay? So character, drag and drop on the joint, any joint. And then, 
So I'm going to name this mocap so there's no confusion. Characters, character, this is the one we just dropped in, mocap. And then I'm going to bake to control rig. Okay, so now, there we go. I'll name this one to mocap control rig. Okay. So now uh, you can actually do the same steps as Mixamo, but I'm going to do something differently here where I'm going to bring in another character and make him follow this control rig. It's, it's a different method. You don't have to use it. You can use the, the other one where you could just save, save as do the same thing as we did, and then load it on your character in your scene. Uh, this is just this is just another another way. So now, if I bring in the other character, I'll bring in humanoid. It's a bit. Uh, yeah, he's almost the same scale, so we're not gonna get too much. We'll go through the kind of the different scale stuff next week because only have half an hour left. So this is a humanoid. Um, right now he's being driven by the skeleton. You can make him driven by the control rig or make him uh, be driven by that mocap control rig. So if I drop down the list you will see the other character in the scene. So if you choose it now, he follows the mocap. As simple as that. You will get a bunch of a bunch of things here. This is not the control rig. This is the the, the sort of the the menu for uh, what we call a retargeting system. So what retargeting means is you're retargeting from another control rig to the current character. Uh, you've chosen in the drop-down list. So think of it as another source. So you can, if you have three characters in this scene, you can make one of them follow another one or the, this one follow this one. This is what we call retargeting. In the retargeting, you have some extra options you can choose, okay? So those options are these, these effectors. Remember the IK, FK effectors? So if you, if you play with these, you can kind of, if, if your character is fat or thin or has different proportions, you can kind of control globally where the arms are, where the feet are, where his spine is, to make it follow as close as possible to the mocap. So think of it as, as a global setting you use on these on these uh, targets to, to to drive the depending on the character that you have okay um, I mean it's pretty good as is because you know you, this character is a human and the mocap was human so they're pretty close yeah There is an offset because um, you can actually bring them close together with, if you go in characters, character, you can make him follow the exact uh, position in space. But you don't have to because we usually reserve this. Where is it? Match source right here. Uh, if there's no need to make them follow in the same exact spot, w leave it at default. The only reason why would you would use you want to, you want it to match the exact same as the mocap is when you have contact. Let's say there's a grabbing move, or uh, maybe he's sitting on a chair, and you, even sitting on a chair, you can still move him in story mode to adjust them. But 95% of the time, you don't need to match the exact same position. 
You can by going in the character humanoid and you go in retargeting and you click match source. So it will match exactly the position in space. By default it's off. But you can you can put it on if you want. Okay, so I'm I'm not gonna go through this stuff a lot. Uh, we'll go through it next week. But the gist of it is you can you can adjust any of these. See? You can make him if let's say he's too forward, you wanna bring him back, that's how you can adjust it. So right now, this character, the humanoid, is being driven by the mocap. I cannot edit it. I cannot take it into story mode. I cannot do anything. I need to bake to its own control rig, to the humanoid control rig. Okay? So it's the same process. Go bake, control rig. Uh, the control rig doesn't exist yet, so it's going to ask me. So now... If I look under control rig, there's a new one. So I'm going to name this as humanoid. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I have to bake it because if it stays like this, uh, Story mode won't recognize it. It has to be baked on the control rig. Just like the Mexamo stuff. So the, skin the skin, this? Yeah. No, the skin is just uh, just a mesh. It doesn't. What is baked? Like? Ba baked is uh, you're taking the, the keys, you know, the position and rotation on every joint and baking the, the keys, those, those translation and rotation keys, you're baking it on the control rig. So you kind of transfer, if you want. Instead of baking, you're transferring those keys on the control rig. So the animation? So the animation itself, yeah. Every, every bone on every frame has a position and rotation uh, information. Okay, so now... Um, now you can save this and load, let's say... You want to transfer it to another one? You can transfer it. But I'm going to keep rolling with this file. And I'm going to hide the, the mocap actor. I don't need him anymore. Uh, this display will show and hide your, your control rig. I'm also going to hide Tyra. And auto arrange. Yeah, I can hide you. So now what we got left is there we go. We got just a control rig of the humanoid. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna save this as uh, in my own folder because I don't want to overwrite the stuff on the S drive or anything so always save it locally so Jeremy Punch is good um, so just one little tip after you've saved the Mixamo stuff this option is always on so <laughs> If you don't want to keep saving different takes every time, just uncheck it. That's why I, ha I was hesitant three weeks ago not to show you this stuff because by mistake, you're probably going to be saving a take as an FBX every time. Yes? What happens when you save the take as an FBX? Let's say you have, you, your working file has three takes. Every time you save, it will save three takes separately as an FBX separately. So just, just be careful with this one. Always put your eyes on it. Make sure, actually, some of the assignments I got did not have clips in them. It's probably because the embed media was off. So when you save, every time you get this box, just keep your eyes on that little those two options. Embed media should be on. And save per take should be off unless you're saving Mixamo 
stuff to use in story mode. Good? No? <laughs> Anyways, it's not like you've lo you're losing any work when you save per tick. The, your, your, um, your files are still there, but they're separate. Okay? So, save this. Now I can take this file and kind of, uh, in the next half hour, I'm going to show you how to kind of convert the mocap to a stylized keyframe animation by removing keys, just keeping your key poses. So I'm going to take um, just one small segment of this mocap. Probably the punch. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go in story mode and just, I'm going to duplicate it actually. Just so that I have a backup. So go on takes, choose this take, duplicate. I'll call it. Uh, Stylize zero one, and I'm just going to choose from here time start and punch and up to maybe here when he stops. Okay, that's good. So now I have this punch. So I can clean this arm just to be, oh no, it's okay, I can do that. I can do that later once I just have my keys, my key poses. Um, go back in story, humanoid, insert. Um, so in story, you can, I'm wondering if I should do the easy way. might be easier if I delete the keys. So if I go back here, yeah. Okay, forget about story because it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of time. So the normal the the best way is just to delete poses that you don't need basically. Okay. Uh, the way to do this is make sure you're in full body and how do you pick how do you pick the poses that you need it's basically key poses with some in-betweens don't go too aggressive in the beginning i would uh, stay conservative because if you delete too much you have to bring it back from uh from from the original take that's why the reason i duplicated the takes is i have one take with raw and then the other one is the edit one, basically. Okay, so be a bit more conservative on the on the um, on deleting the keys. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's just go through the the first section, and you'll you'll understand what I mean. So this is your first pose. So in here, see he's kind of anticipating. He's doing a little hop. And this is anticipation. So obviously you need this pose, the anticipation pose, but you also need this, this high pose here. 
because it's a, it's a hop motion. So you need the first pose, the hop, and then the down pose, which is the anticipation. I mean, the whole thing is the anticipation, but you still need the, the high pose on top. So the highest pose is here, okay? So you don't need technically these ones. So now he's going like this, and the lowest is here. And the, I measure the lowest is where the, the hips are, okay? So I'm, I think it's this one. Yeah, roughly around here. Before he starts moving forward, this is his last pose of anticipation. So I can delete the previous ones. So in a punch, normally, you want... Um, you want sort of the wind up and then the contact, okay? So what we're looking for here is this is the contact. Because he slows down here. And the wind up is somewhere here. So I would delete these. Contact is here. And then the follow through. Maybe here, but I would still keep a pose here because he's transferring the weight on the left here. So I wouldn't just delete everything in here. Just to stay conservative, I would I would maybe keep this one as he's transferring the weight to the left leg. And then once this foot contacts is your next major pose. Okay? So now again here he is transferring to plant the other foot. So you still need the sort of like walk backwards. So you still need, this is the contact, and this is the stride, the passing, sorry. So you still need that one. And the contact again here. Let's see. Then passing again, because he's, he's just settling. And then contact here again. So let's, let's take a look at what we have. It kind of really matches what the raw, what the raw mocap was doing. So let's take a look. I'm going to do the time again, just so we don't, we don't play the whole thing again. Time, stop. So now if you look at the raw mocap, uh, by the way, you can switch easily here, loop it. This is the raw mocap. And you switch to the keyframe one that we just took, they're almost identical. But the difference is you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, around ten poses instead of sixty-three. Yeah. Exactly. No, not performance wise. It's just easier. Let's say you. So, I'm not asking you to stylize your your film at the end of the the semester. But in case you have a shot where you want to push, let's say you have a a small fighting scene and you have a big takedown at the end where you want to stylize and you want to push the poses. This is one way to kind of uh, deal with all this mocap 
every key on every frame. So you're sort of reducing the all the keys and just to make it more manageable you only have to deal with 10 keys which is your key poses. It's kind of you just took the mocap and you made a keyframe version out of it for easier editing. That's how you should look at it. Okay? Because then what you can do is you take this keyframe version Sorry, this one. And then you can start editing those poses on a layer. Remember? I don't know. We, we touched a bit on layers. Okay, so we're going to do that today in the next 15 minutes. Okay, so the first thing, uh, save. Uh, we create a layer here. So all your keys are still there, but they're on the base layer. The reason you, the, the structure of a layer or the process of a layer is like Photoshop. You have your base and then you layer on top your edits. So it's kind of non-destructive. So if you want to roll back to the, the base uh, animation, everything is still there. Okay? Uh, you'll see in a minute what, what I mean exactly. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the mitten hands, okay? I'm just going to create a pose. I can take just the finger effectors and rotate. You can make a punch too. And we can go full body, we can give them full body because we're going to tweak the, the poses on full body using full body keys. Take the thumb. Yeah, this one doesn't have uh, the best anatomy, so we're just going <laughs> to go with the closest thing possible. Close enough. Um, so I can copy that pose on the other finger. If I go create a pose in the pose control, uh, I can remove the matching. I don't need matching. I need mirroring. So I'm going to choose the other finger, make sure mirroring is on, and paste. And paste not in full body, but in body part. Put a key. Switch back to full body and remove mirroring. So, um, so layering. So you can, if you if you maybe push the pose too much and you want to see what the original pose was, go in layers and just mute that layer. You will see exactly what's underneath. Okay. This is this is the the beauty thing about layers. You're gonna get that in Maya. I don't know this year or sometime next year. So it's the same process. Sir? Yeah. When you chose body part, how come there's only handles selected and not like another body part? So these here, these are for how you key on the. Yeah, like the mirror. So like it's because when I applied the mirror, yeah. I was in full body, so it pasted the whole pose. the The pose that you create here is actually a full body pose. Uh, yes, I, if you have just one body part okay. and you have this one on, it will only paste on that. Well, these are all body parts. This is one body part because if I choose the other finger, it's, it has a key as well. So think of it as limbs. So this one is a body part. This one up to here is a body part. All three, the three spines are a body part too. Okay, so... I'm going to move to the next pose, so go here. This one, anticipation is not bad. I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to accentuate the punch, okay? Um, yeah, we can accentuate and then 
tweak the timing. So I like everything up to here. I want to take this pose and exaggerate it, okay? Um, I'm going to go back to the layer and start working on, a f on the full body with a new pose, okay? So I'll take this pose and start moving the body parts. I want him to be a bit lower, maybe a bit forward. Uh, incline him a little bit, push the spine. Be careful you don't push him too much off balance. Um, you can also open up the the foot just to make it a little bit more exaggerated. Let me see, it's locked. Okay, yeah, that that's rotation is from the mocap. It's okay. You can fix the the penetration as well on the layers. So if he's passing through the grid, you can make him uh, flush on the grid. Um, I like to to put a plane in the in the scene. If you go in elements, plane, just drag this one and put it at zero in Y. Think of it as this is your new grid, so you kind of see where the foot are, are going through. Um, you can change the color, but it's not necessary for now. I'm going to name this floor. And this one skin. Okay. And I want to push the maybe the the punch a little bit further. Maybe a little higher. So you can definitely push the, the shoulders a little bit, uh, they're a little bit too behind, so you can, I want to get more reach on the shoulders, so you can take the shoulder and push it further. Maybe tilt the head a little bit too, right? So now we have, if we check what, what it was, you see the difference, right? The thing is, when we change this pose here, everything behind it changed as well. I mean, technically, there's nothing wrong with this. Maybe it's going to work. But in case you need to keep the original anticipation, you, you're happy with the original anticipation pose, uh, which is this. The way to do this is you go on the pose that you want to keep. And in here, zero, in key control, you can reset it to that base. So if you click on zero, what zero means, it will take the, the, the pose on the base, on the base animation and apply it on the layer. It's kind of zeroes out all the translation and rotation. Okay? So now if you mute, it's the exact same pose. So think of zero as you're zeroing out the pose to what was on the base layer. If you want to keep those changes as is, you don't want to touch it. Uh, obviously the, the fingers are back. So what you can do, you can actually leave the fingers till the end. You don't have to do it in the beginning. But you can just go in body part 
select both fingers any any fingers on the control rig and delete it will just keep the first key that you just set in the beginning yeah Uh, I just I was just gonna I was just showing you how to how to zero out let's say for example right you don't you can keep it uh, but if if it sometimes if you push the pose this pose too much if you if you go too crazy then the anticipation is broken right so let's say I pushed it oof this much this much then your anticipation is off balance too so you, if you want to revert back toward it was on the base layer, use the zero, uh, zero key. Um, so that's it kind of in a nutshell. Um, my playback is broken again, yay. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but you get the gist of it. You delete unwanted keys, you keep your key pose. Be conservative because it's better than go too aggressive with deleting the keys and then you're missing something. So always keep in mind what the action is. For this exercise, you can use the same, the same files I used just to learn the process because if you use something else, like more something more subtle, like, uh, I don't know, he's waving, you're not actually exercising, exaggerating the poses and stuff like that. So you can use the same exercise that we did today for the next uh, assignment. Um, I don't know why. So just to compare the this one and the raw. Okay, so there you go. You see the difference? You already see the difference with just one pose. Okay? And the other thing, I will, before we wrap. Where's my poses? Can't. Um Show me my poses. For some reason, I, I don't see my keys anymore. Oh, because I'm on the wrong. Okay. So if you don't see your pose and you have two characters, just make sure you're on the right character. Okay, so. Yeah, I should have done the timing first. Okay, so uh, normally, if you want to edit the timing, do it before creating a layer. It's a bit easier. So imagine you wanted to adjust the timing. Uh, you don't need all these. So you can adjust, uh, hold on a sec, 202. So let's say you wanted the punch faster. You wanted the punch to happen in two frames, okay? And you wanna spend more time on the anticipation here. This is the other reason why working with just keys is a little bit easier. Uh, you could have you could have done that in story mode too. It, the, that's the nice thing about motion mode. You have you have choices. But if you, if you're stylizing and you want to uh, edit the poses heavily, this is a better way to work with. Um, so if you want to edit the timing, you want this faster. It's as simple as dragging this pose, right backwards, so you get this much. You get two frames of punches. The problem is if you already 
uh, tweak the poses on a layer, you have to match what you just did with the timing underneath because it does it does have an effect. The layer uh, considered it as an additive on top of the base, so it's an additive translation and additive rotation. So you adjusted this key here on the base. You need to adjust the pose on top on the layer. So now what you get is boom. And now if you mute, right, on the next frame, you get the uh, exaggerated pose. Cool. Any questions before you, some of you leave for the presentation? Yeah. Assignment is the same thing. Take the mocap. Just uh, uh, it's on the it's on the folder. S drive. I'll put it in the Moodle. The the path to the mocap. So it's exactly the same. I would I would keep it simple for now. Yeah. Just the same. Use the same punch. Take Jeremy's punch. Apply it. Apply it on a character. It could be any character. Doesn't matter. And just exa exaggerate a couple of poses. Good. Have fun at the, yeah, you had a question? Oh, no. good. So some of you wanted to see me. I, I'm available till after six. So if you guys have questions, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs>